the other way. Greenfield has no risk because it's nothing invested. And brownfield is an almost complete or in the middle. That's the difference between uh, one and the other. Normally, greenfield is really preferable. Uh, different initiatives, humanitarian and social. Uh, I will do this a bit later. Uh, the environment, naturally, we all know this a priority. Food chain also, energy, especially the renewable ones, and anything that is productive. I'm not looking at my notes, so well, I'll forget a few things probably. Anyway. Constraints, restrictions. Well, blacklisting is a major, it's a major topic here. Many countries, or at least some of the countries, are blacklisted for different reasons. For example, for human rights, the uh, United Nations have blacklisted. I remember some cases that have been blacklisted from 1990 and still are blacklisted for human rights uh, situations and problems. Iran, for example, and others. So that means they are not allowed to have funds at all in any situation. Uh, although sometimes they, they could do a lot with them. And the rich countries, they could also make investments, but they're not allowed to. Uh, Iran, for example, they have a double situation. They are blocked by the United Nations uh, for human rights and also blocked or blacklisted by the European Commission for uh, misuse of funds uh, local. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, guarantees. Uh, well, uh, nowadays it's difficult to have to find guarantees for an investment project uh, for the country and the government really ask uh, in many situations they really ask for money uh, normally, the, the demand is uh, what we call the sovereign guarantee. The problem is that most countries cannot give a sovereign guarantee. They have no richness enough and sometimes not political will to do that. So they cannot go along with the process. Many times we really reject situations that could be viable, but they have no guarantee. Exaggerated costs. Well, these are funny situations that we know we have been to some of them, like um, I remember one case of um, a group of uh, businessmen, rich, rich businessmen in a country here in Europe, they thought of opening a bank, a bank that really had space, so they would have a space to fill in, really, and they would have no competition, and then they prepared like a business plan. We know, and we know we saw, we know that they spent almost 3 million euro, uh, which were paid to um, famous, one of the famous big five consulting companies. Of course, I will not mention the company. And then uh, we, we had to reject because the business plan had nothing to do with the funds they were applied to, which were European Union funds. These have rules, with rules, and it was completely different. Also, when we looked at the project, we understood that. Um, it shouldn't cost, shouldn't cost more, normally, than 100,000 euros. And instead they paid 2 million. And they got nothing out of it because we rejected it. Because the project had nothing to do with the rules of the European Union funds. So these are one, one, one example of the exaggerated costs there. They, they happen to happens many times. Then there is lobbying. We all know what that means. Uh, I think I, I will say something about this later. Um, it also has costs, of course, it's small. Um, if I remember correctly, I tried to do this this morning. We have a strong law in the European institutions, naturally. It's a legal, it's a legal, it's a legal one, it's legally uh, functioning. And, um, we have more or less internally, internally, we have around uh, 6,000 lobbyists legally, internally, which means that um, you know, business associations, uh, big companies, and so on, they have this number of 6,000, including the Communication Institute of Greece, 
there is also a lobbyist because it's connected with your head, and so automatically, Margarita, our, our dear Margarita, she doesn't have the power she has got, really. She is the, she's there from the beginning. Really. Then we have 3,100 NGOs, we have uh, 1,100 old consulting firms, 600 national authorities, or regional authorities and municipalities, 900 think tanks, uh, academic institutions, and 50 churches or religious uh, uh, communities. Uh, for example, Israel is very strong in this department of lobbying. So they all try their best in what direction? To influence the political situation uh, and take advantage and most of all get funds. This is always the same purpose and the objective. Well, good examples, bad examples. This is also from my practice uh, both in Lisbon and in Brussels. I could mention a few situations like um, beginning with Am I taking too much time? No, no, no not ah, at all. Okay. No, no, it's perfect. I'm moving fast, really. I will react. Oh, I, well, I know you will. I know you will. You don't have tomatoes on you, right? <laughs> yeah, I hope you don't have tomatoes over there. Uh, on the good side, well, uh, I have a few uh, points that I'd like to stress, but they really are nice uh, initiatives. For example, a group of um, uh, institutions uh, in the education field have been joining, they are already 12, I think, or something. They have been joining to develop uh, uh, international projects, starting from kindergarten all the way up to university, putting aside their own competition. This was a good sign because normally they compete so much, it's incredible. And uh, some of these projects, and I hope they really go through. In the end, uh, they will put aside competition. You know, they all different. They they sell different products. Allow me to say this, and yet they could, you know, synergically join uh, forces and uh, move away with this project. They're already to know, I suppose. Then, this uh, from Norway, for example, uh, there's a new approach of a project which uh, combats fire, and uh, this has some problems because of the law. Involved. I mean, they want to somehow not stop fire, that's impossible, but uh, allow to combat fire before it spreads. And this is a very good project, but uh, some strong lobbies are opposed for obvious reasons, uh, uh, economical ones. Also, another one from Denmark, also uh, about water flows, what they do is uh, also uh, stop this or avoid this uh, water flood and tragedy like this, what the tragedy is. Also, the, block, the, lobby, the lobbies are also against for some reasons. Um, in this case of the fire, it's funny because they say, well, we have the embers and we have firefighters, we have everything. what are we going to do with them? So it's very good projects that will end up being rejected somehow. Um, but this one is a, it's a really good one. A new pure water. Uh, it involves Croatia, Russia, Taiwan and some other country, I don't remember. Apparently, they can get this pure water, <coughs> they don't say it cures everything, but it solves many situations, and it will be a real pure water. And this comes out of some electrical molecule that they can transform, and then uh, with some other things, and mechanical things which I don't know about, they really can get this. Uh, this one also, as you may, look, you may understand, uh, will probably be rejected for the same reasons. I mean, I'm talking about good projects that will end up badly, probably. Then we have uh, some NGOs uh, now doing uh, good things and doing the right things, uh, some, some good examples as well. On the side, and I'm about to finish, I suppose, on the bad side are bad dash streams. Well, uh, we have been talking a few times about this. Some of you already heard me say this. Uh, this is a funny thing, and today is uh, sort of normal. Which is the richer, always uh, the richer are the ones who ask for more money. The richer they are, the more they ask. <laughs> and unfortunately, as, and as you know, I'm sure it's not to give to the poor naturally. Someone else's pockets. And 
and this is what we do. I mean, we, we detect so many things, and we, we see it comes from people who really don't, don't, don't need the money at all. <coughs> then we have a, a lot of bad uh, examples. People who ask uh, money for projects to be done and developed in prisons, and then they provide services inside the prisons, and then they ask for humanitarian uh, funding. Well, humanitarian funding is something that means to give 100% cash, 100% cash, non-refundable, which means I'll give you 100% and you don't have to pay anything back. That's right, that's uh, humanitarian, we do it that way. But humanitarian is like, for example, now go to Mozambique and uh, help with a tragedy in Mozambique or something like that. That is supposed to be humanitarian funding. <coughs> Also, this example I was giving the other day of this uh, archbishop uh, from the church, uh, I will not sure which one, that wants uh, 75 million, uh, it's new, 75 million for a cathedral. And uh, the trick that he used was to name the cathedral after <laughs> um, one of the previous presidents of the European Commission. So he thought, well, with the name I put here, you know, this probably won't be rejected. He thought wrong. Uh, I mentioned the other situation the other day. This minister from a country who wanted some percentage on a project that was really necessary. Two minutes? Yes. Okay. Yes. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. I will talk about the minister there. Uh, I'm still in bad examples. No, I have, uh, for example, a big project that was approved here in the European Union, and then uh, uh, for political reasons the man was arrested. When we had everything sold and so on to give the money, he was arrested for a political situation. A Navy admiral also, he had retired, he had 12 projects in several countries, and then because of the party problems, uh, you know, made that he died in the projects. Good projects also failed. Um, Potential peculiar. Well, potential peculiar business. Well, we have uh, cemeteries for pets. This is quite a big business today. Real, real fortunes uh, uh, are being uh, requested, and uh, guess what? They are being funded. They really are. Normally, they ask too much money. It's a fact. I mean, too much for the type of project. But uh, yet, yeah, they, they get they get really. really uh, in the uh, famous. And then we have, um, this is one way, I hope uh, ladies will uh, pardon me, and thank God you don't have tomatoes on you. Um, this is the most funny one that I had recently, European Union football clubs. They wanted, and they will be uh, funded, because the heavy of the football clubs is very strong. It's also a big lobby, it's not a I'm talking about condoms. This started with an English club, a famous one. They thought of uh, uh, manufacturing uh, condoms uh, with, um, you know, with, uh, with the names and the symbols and the logos and everything. Of course, this raises many questions, like quality of the, of the, <laughs> of the condom, naturally. Also the size, because it depended, each club wanted, no, I want to say that I got the cup, the you know, European cup, and the World Cup, and this and that, and, um, and the description of the club, and so on. And this is a, it's a funny project, strange project, but uh, it was well, welcome, we would rather see it, funny enough. And I said clubs, because then, as you know, many other football clubs are copying the, the same thing. Okay, that's uh, Yeah, this is what we have more or less on the pipeline right now, just to give you some ideas of the sectors. As I said, all sectors are accepted, uh, except the ones that are, that are blacklisted. Uh, right now, uh, starting to 2021, there will be the, the budget of the European Commission on the government. Right now, we're talking about uh, lots of money, naturally. I still have one minute? No, one minute. Yes. Ah, thank okay. you. Just to mention something about the amounts that I have here. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 
Okay, right now, for example, we're using almost 400 million uh, in European Union countries, so on, which means that, for example, the champion is Poland with 63 billion, Cyprus is the poorest uh, country with 300 million only, Greece 12 billion. I mentioned this because I like you really. <laughs> <laughs> and Portugal 15, 15 million, I'm sorry, more than you, but anyway. Okay. Okay. <laughs> As you know, this has to do with the region, smaller cities, big cities, you know, the taxes. And uh, the taxes go from, you know, from 100% in some cases to 25% in other cases, so it can go all the way. So, uh, sometimes uh, with no interest, as I said, it's the, the best funding system, it's European Union, and I'm not selling anything, I'm not a citizen, but it's true, nothing can go through, but it's very strict, and it's, uh, it's not easy to get, and there are the lobbies, as I mentioned, that's why uh, I raised the question of um, the lobbies. But at the end, I would say something like, um, my question of that one, I think I can move on. Ah, it was before last question, anyway. The question was uh, public, uh, private, or mixed. I would say mixed because it, it's uh, less risky. Uh, it involves other partners, uh, also share the risk. There will be more money to share with other candidates or uh, applicants. It will make it easier normally. Uh, my usual sentence uh, when I speak to people or I see people in any way in any place, I always say that no good project will ever be without funding. But of course, you would say, what is a good project? What is a nice project or a good project? This is the major goal, of course. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. So, thank you very much. We uh, we have five or seven Four minutes questions. for questions. Mm -hmm. And the first question I, that I would like to ask is for the funny projects that yeah. we said. Yeah. Oh, yes. How can this kind of projects for the dogs or for the, for the football club or condoms. for the condoms be financed mm -hmm. and are there good projects are rejected and who decides about which projects?